I know people, I see people whose lives have been completely transformed because they came to a chassis. And I know people who, if a chassis did not exist, their lives would be very different. The way we select students, um, and you know, from the very first year, even till now, we have tended to enroll about 20% of our applicant pool. So it is quite competitive to get in. And the selection process looks at their academic track record from high school, but it also looks at what they've done outside the classroom. So we want to see how students have, enga have engaged beyond you know, studying. Um, we interview students to try to understand who they are and what makes them tick. And we're looking for people who will make the best of the opportunity, people who have leadership potential. When you, but we also want diversity, right? So we want people from all economic strata and we want an equal number of men and women and, and all of that. And so we do our admissions in a way that we're really seeing people for who they are. And then we provide financial support for those who can't afford the fees on, them, on their own. Ashesa University has a four-year undergraduate program. That core curriculum is really about engaging students' minds broadly. It's about engaging them in such a way that they grapple with you know, the big questions. What, what is a good society? What kind of society do we want to create in Ghana? What kind of leaders do we want to be? Um, it also enables them to learn to connect the dots between disciplines. Because that's where, you know, the best critical thinking comes from and that's where creativity comes from. So we want to have all students have a broad perspective before they're specializing. Um, and we want them to go through a process of discovering their purpose. We believe that that kind of approach um, enables students to navigate the world, a world where problems don't come within disciplines, problems actually cut across disciplines. Our focus is educating leaders who think holistically, who are ethical, who have empathy, uh, who are problem solvers, and um, who are creative, right? So. Everything that we do inside the classroom, outside the classroom, is aimed at achieving that result. I think that what we're doing um, is feasible anywhere in the world. In our context, we had a difficulty, especially when we started. It's gotten easier over time. But when we started, the educational system in Ghana is organized differently. There's a lot more rote memorization and rote learning. There's a lot more narrow learning in universities. And so, you know, when you say I'm going to start a university that's doing things differently, the, be the first question is where are you going to hire the faculty from? Who know how to teach in this different way? Um, will the students gravitate towards it or not? And will the authorities you know, the regulator accept this new way of doing things. In the early years, we had to navigate all of that. And the toughest parts were getting the regulator to allow us to do it, and also recruiting the faculty um, and retooling the faculty to do this. The really interesting thing is, we thought that students would struggle with it, and they didn't. You know, when students first came to a university that was challenging them to do things differently, um, for them it was almost like a breath of fresh air. It was suddenly they were in a place where they had freedom to sort of explore and express themselves and express their own ideas. And they, had, they were in an environment where it was safe to take intellectual risks and sometimes fail, right? But fail in a safe way. 
we try to have a very experiential learning experience. So students have to do practical projects, both in the classroom and in our labs, um, as well as outside the university. They'll do internships, they go and do community service as a requirement for graduation, because we see all of that as part of the learning experience. And then finally, I would say that you know, in 2008, our students enacted an honor system on campus. And now this honor system, the way it works is they say, we will not cheat, we will not tolerate cheating or lying or stealing among our peers. And, and they take that promise very seriously. We do not proctor exams at a chassis. Students self-proctor their exams. And, you know, unfortunately, a few students do cheat, but fortunately, their colleagues hold them to account. And having a student body that is holding itself to account in that way is unique on the African continent. But I think it's what makes our students, um, it puts them in a place where they're going to be great leaders for the future. These are the people you can trust. Um, to manage the resources of companies and countries.